I wanted to build something that reminded me of camping and I needed to do something with my damaged camper so instead of just repairing it I decided to reuse the trailer and build something totally new. This is what I came up with. Since you just got here, I want to welcome you inside for a look, then we'll tour the outside and the rear kitchen. I wanted to keep with the spirit of the old camper by keeping this one as simple as possible. There's no insulation or latest gadgets, but there's just enough to be a little more comfortable. For the interior storage, I built a regular top cabinet and a little homemade wooden catch. Below that, there's a top access horizontal cabinet that opens by removing a wooden pen. The top access works perfect for having the mattress so close. And on the entry side of the camper, there's a stationary shelf. The bunk is 30 inches deep and there's a one step ladder to help the climb. It's 70 and a half inches long and I can stretch out all the way at a slight angle, even at six foot one. The windows help to open the space up to nature and help to make it feel larger up there. It's also the best view in the house. The hardware for comfort and power inside the cabin is this air conditioner, a three receptacle surge protector with USB ports, and these switches for the string lights and porch light. The air conditioner vents through metal ductwork in the rear storage area and out the bottom of the camper. The 9 foot length of the camper works great for allowing an adult to have full length sleeping room while hiding a window AC inside the build of the camper. The style of so many great home build campers I've seen have been compromised by boxy window ACs poking out somewhere. And I'm even guilty of this in my first build. For the front and rear ceiling curves, I trimmed burlap fabric with thin strips of pine. There's not much to the curtains, but they get the job done. I used coroplast and sheet metal on the roof. The idea for a partial coroplast roof came from my job as a FedEx delivery driver. Their stepside vans have a transparent roof in the back, and that helps to see the packages. I knew that coreplast could give this effect, so I tested it out. It worked out great letting in a lot of natural light. To finish off the inside, I found some neat license plate fabric and trimmed it out to make a headboard. Let's take a lap around and get into the details of the build. Those windows are acrylic. I learned on the first build to stay away from glass if possible on these custom builds. It just breaks too easy. At the lower part of the door opening, I cut out this entry step and added some grip tape. You can also see the water tank fill spout in its homemade rubber cap. I always try to hide the boring hardware, so hiding the fill spout here worked well. Working with wooden windows, it was tough to figure out the waterproofing. I sealed the wood with Thompson's and laid a thick layer of silicone on the window sill. I also left an eighth inch gap at the bottom of the screen so, the wa so that water can easily drain from the sill. And those little windows actually move. The rest are one piece fixed units. This three quarter inch recess edge gives the camper a distinct look and indirectly helps with water protection. And I believe that the extra thick trim helps with the overall sturdiness of the camper. The tongue rack is the only place I use treated lumber. I didn't care for the greenish look anywhere else. With four eye bolts, there's plenty of options for tying things down and plenty of room for a cooler or generator here. Also the spare tire bolts to a slab of wood attached to the camper body. The opposite side is a far simpler copy of the entry side, with the only notable feature being the shore power port. For the tail and marker lights, I chose LEDs that had an extra thick rubber seal. The rear of the camper hides a storage area and a place for preparing meals. There's a water pump with switch and the power center is located here too. Instead of permanently installing a sink, I thought it better to use a collapsible sink for this setup. Also there's plenty of room for a camp stove on the counter and for the adventurous, there's just enough hose for a shower. 
I used the six receptacle power strip. The AC lights, a cabin receptacle, and a DC converter are plugged in. There's an open receptacle for anything needed in the back too. A full-size cooler will fit on this side of the storage area. And there's still enough room to access the lower compartments. It's hard to imagine needing more than these basic features. The curved strips of wood you see here are just for show. Under them is galvanized sheet metal, and that's where the waterproofing truly is. Still, I filled each gap in the wood with a quality exterior caulk capable of handling a hot roof. This is a door off the old camper. As part of that camper, it's been pulled across the country four times through multiple rainstorms. It sat out through two winters and summers uncovered. It was treated with Thompsons and held up incredibly well. Any untreated quarter-inch plywood just won't hold up under the, even the slightest repeated moisture. Due to how well my first wooden camper did, I was really confident in using Thompsons again. So this wooden camper has been completely treated with Thompsons and the tiny gaps between the 1x10s and 1x6s are filled with Sikaflex 221. It's an extremely durable rubber-like caulk. The camper has been rained on twice with no issues and one of the storms was torrential. I particularly like the way this camper looks in the evening with the yellow glow of its string lights. It's a very welcoming effect. This project has become a successful real-life image of my interpretation of camping. It was a really fun build and it's an awesome replacement of the old 4x8 wood camper. That was a great camper. Too bad it got so beat up. But in loss, there was always opportunity. When building the rocket, I definitely caught the bug for building mini campers. There's something about building a livable tiny space that for me provides a deep level of satisfaction. I want to thank you for watching and thank my subscribers for being patient between builds. There will definitely be more and there will soon be a complete build video up showing how I built this newest camper. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll consider sharing it, subscribing, and checking out my other build videos. The more support I get, the more I'll build for your entertainment. It's tough to express how much I enjoyed building this latest camper. I absolutely loved it. Happy camping everyone.